Hi guys, it's Sheila. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you guys why I bought the Sony A5100 camera and why I'm actually now getting rid of it. So I'm going to tell you all the reasons why I loved it, um, all the cons that I think were things that just didn't work for me. And I'm also going to tell you the things that I really, really loved about this camera and why you should maybe have one in 2020. So if you're interested in hearing what I have to say, then just keep on watching. All right, so one of the main reasons that I actually got this camera, it is an ASPC camera, meaning it's a crop camera um, by Sony. It's actually one of the cheaper options, if not the cheapest. Um, so that was the main reason. I wanted something that was very affordable that I could actually take with me everywhere. So the price that I bought this for was about $350 or something like that, which at the time was probably one of the cheapest cameras that I could get. Um, I also wanted to get my hands on a Sony because I'm a Canon shooter, so I wanted to have kind of like just try a little bit of Sony, see how I liked it. And it was actually a good entry level camera just to get familiar with the Sony menus. I will say though that this camera doesn't have all the options that other modern like Sony cameras have. But it is it definitely, you know, Sony. <laughs> so I did get a little bit more familiar with it. It's a little bit more complicated than Canon. I do like how just easy and user-friendly Canon is. But this was actually not really hard to learn. So if you are looking for something like this, I would definitely recommend it. So the second reason, not only because of the price, I would say is because it is so lightweight. This camera is so tiny. It maybe weights with the kit lens, maybe about three, not even three pounds. Um, so I could throw this on my bag. I could throw this on my hiking pack. I could throw some in my purse. It was just something that I could always have with me. And this little lens right here is actually not as bad. I did end up getting just another lens. Um, I will talk about it in a minute, but this one is the kit lens. Is it 55 or the 16 to 50, um, 3.5 to 5.6. Actually really, really nice lens. I did get really nice images with it. I know a lot of people just prefer prime lenses, which I do too, but I've learned to like appreciate kit lenses to come so handy, especially when you're doing like landscape photography, when you're hiking, you want a really, really wide lens. And those lenses tend to be a little bit more expensive if you're buying like a prime lens or even if you buy an Zoom L lens from Canon. Um, so I really appreciated the fact that I had this one. Um, it didn't bother me so much, the 3.5 to 5.6 f-stop, because I wasn't really looking for that really blurry background, and I feel like this is just a really overall lens, um, so I really don't think that this is a disadvantage, and if you are going to be vlogging with it, I think it's really cool, because you can just zoom in and out um, as much as you want to. So another thing I like about this camera is the flip-up screen. Um, I think the A5000, the A5100, the A6000, and the A6400 are the only ones that have this, but I think it's really, really nice, especially if you are someone that vlogs, if you like to look at yourself when you're vlogging, or even if you're just taking a picture with you in it, a selfie or something, you can just see if you are in focus um, and if your composition is right. If you don't want to use it, the flip-up screen, you can also just turn it down um, all the way. Just take, you know, lower shots and still see what is going on on the camera. So I think that's really nice. So another good thing that this camera has, it's not really a fully articulated screen, but you can actually touch to focus on things. And I think that there is a, just a really nice thing because sometimes I couldn't really see what I was focusing on. And I will say in a minute why I couldn't see, but I could just touch on things and it would focus and it was just such a lifesaver. And I feel like it was really easy for me to just, you know, fine focus. I will say that the autofocus on this camera is actually amazing. I am a Canon user and I love dual pixel autofocus. I will say that, but just to have a $350 camera in my hands from Sony and see it just focus so nicely and without much effort, um, makes me think that Sony has something special about it. So it was definitely something really nice for me to experience, um, with this camera being my first time just using the brand, um, overall, but I feel like it was really nice just to, um, I focus with it. It has different settings. I always use it in continuous focus, which I found that it was just really nice. It also has a beacon level. I do find that the fastest autofocus, which is too fast, and it was like, it didn't look very natural. Um, it just focused way faster than the human eye would. So I always left it on normal. And uh, it was just super nice. I also will say that the, the image is set. I got from this camera, even though they didn't look so impressive on the viewfinder, once I like uploaded it to my computer, the images were amazing and I was really, really impressed by it. So I really like that. Um, another thing that I do like is it has an iMovie setting right here because if you are set onto the movie setting on the camera um, without clicking this, you can't really switch back from movies 
to photos really quickly. So you have to go back and kind of change the setting. But you're, if you're set to photo, you can always just click this um, record button and you can start recording. So I always just use that instead. It has steady shot and I found that this was really nice when I used my other lens, which was a Sigma 30 millimeter um, 1.4, which by the way, this is one of the best lenses. It's all, only for ASPC, it's not full frame, which I'm super sad, but I just don't wanna see it go. I'm gonna hold on to it to see if it works in my next camera and how my pictures come out because it's such a good lens it's just amazing but it doesn't have any image stabilization it's actually really shaky when you're trying to take a video when you're trying to focus and the manual focus on it it's just so I, I just don't think it's the best so whenever I was trying to manual focus it would just make my <laughs> videos so shaky I'm also I have shaky hands as well so it really came in handy that this had steady shot in it it doesn't have um, IBIS but it does work really well and if you're getting an entry level SBC camera, then I feel like you don't need anything more than that. So if you're doing anything like handheld videos or anything like that, it will just help you a little bit. And if you have a lens that does have um, image stabilization, then that would be just a plus. That is another thing. And the other thing that I really like is that it shoots 1080 at 60 frames per second. For the price, I think that's really impressive. Um, and all my videos when I go hiking and stuff, I don't. I always do it in 60 frames per second because I don't really know when I'm going to slow down. But yeah. So those are all the pros. Um, now I'm going to talk about the cons and why I'm actually getting rid of this camera. I It's actually sad for me to see it go, but there's some little things that really, really bother me. And I, I think you have to understand on why I bought this camera and what I was planning to use it for. So at first, I wanted a camera that would just work with my YouTube videos. So I would be filming with this one, which is my Canon Rebel T6i for my YouTube videos and I would have this on the side just to film for Instagram. So one of the biggest downfalls for this is that it overheats so fast, like so fast, 20 minutes of recording and this camera has to be shot down and <laughs> you have to give it a couple of minutes and turn it back on. So that was a big con because my Canon would just keep going and I would have to stop and just wait for this camera to work, do 20 more minutes and then do it all over again. So that started to piss me off a little bit. It definitely slowed down my work and just made things a little bit more complicated. Um, so another thing that I didn't like about it is that the battery runs out really quickly and I don't know if it's because I only have two Sony cameras and then I have two like newer ones or something like that and that was a bit of a downfall but I've heard that all Sony cameras kind of have this problem and all Sony cameras kind of have the overheating problem as well. I don't all the mirrorless ones at least but honestly this one I think is the worst one that I've heard, I've watched a lot of reviews, people talking about the a7 II, the a7 III, and I feel like nobody has this problem with 20 minutes of recording. I feel like that's a little bit ridiculous, especially for a camera that was made for blogging. So yeah, that's one thing that really um, kind of upsets me. The other thing is that um, the on and off button can get switched so quickly. So sometimes I had it in my bag or even like in my purse and it would switch to on, run down my battery, and then when I went to turn it on, my battery was dead. It happened a lot of times. It's not like a handful of times that I could like be okay with. It just happened like a lot. Another thing is that the zoom is right here in front of your shutter. So whenever I was taking a picture and I had my finger kind of put here, I know it's like a news or error, but I would always zoom in without noticing because the zoom is right here and I just like, it bothered me so much. And um, another thing I think is like the, the body is so small and compact, which is really nice when you're carrying it, even if you're carrying a little tripod. But if you're hand holding this, it's just too small for your, for your hand to be comfortable. And I have really small hands. Um, and I just found it so hard to just like, take a picture and compose it. Um, and it always made me want to kind of like have a viewfinder right here because I couldn't really see on this screen what I wanted because the screen is kind of too small it also doesn't I don't think it's bright enough so whenever I was in a like a very bright situation I couldn't really see on the LCD and that was my only option so I had to kind of improvise and just take a shot without knowing what it would look like so those two things were a little bit upsetting to me that the LCD is just too small and that it wasn't bright enough so I did my best to put it at its brightest and change the settings as much as I could but it just wasn't working so it doesn't have a mic input but honestly if you're filming in a situation like I am right now where um, I'm just home and there's really nothing going on other than some annoying noise that is never on but for some reason it's now um, it does a really good job but if you're anywhere where there's wind um, there's noise around you this is not the camera you want to be carrying with you I know there's some options for people that want to put a microphone like an external microphone even um, do it in your iPhone and that kind of works. Alright you guys, so that is all that I have to say about this camera. Honestly, 
I will say that even though I have all those cons, I did really enjoy using this camera. I think it was worth it. If I had to purchase it again as my first Sony camera, I would definitely do it. Um, and I think the combo of the A5100 with the Sigma 30mm 1.4, which is unbelievable. The images that I got from it was just, were just amazing. Yeah, I also think that this combo with the A5100 and the 30mm 1.4 was also not too heavy, even though this is obviously a little bigger than the kit lens. But I think it was really comfortable. It was also very compact still, like, you know, compared to DSLRs and stuff like that. I feel like the final con of this camera is that it only comes with the USB charger. And the USB charger kind of gets in the way of your lanyard once you have it on. And also the charger doesn't actually go all the way in. So it's, I don't know, I feel like it's always, I always felt like it was about to break. And also like it was in the way of you know, your next trap. But obviously I could get past that. I ended up getting just an external charger where I can charge my batteries versus just plugging the camera in. But that was really annoying for a couple of months. I just had to mention that because you will find that the charger just doesn't, just doesn't go all the way in. It just, I don't understand how this was made, but. So I really, really did like it. There are just some cons that I feel like I've overgrown on this camera and I just, I'm looking for something a little bit more um, professional if I would say. So I am switching this camera to the Sony a7 II and I know that it's an older camera but I've heard great, like, great things about it. I also think that it would be just a little step up um, for me to take on my hiking videos. Still lighter than a Canon you know T6i or 5D Mark IV um, but it's still like nice enough to take amazing images. And another thing is that it is full frame. So um, yeah, if you're looking for an ASPC vlogging camera as an entry level, if you're starting your YouTube channel, I think this is a great option. The only downfall for that would be that it overheats and that it doesn't have a mic input. But if you can work around those things, if you can maybe get a battery that you just plug into the wall, if you're doing some makeup videos or something like that, then this will work for you. So I hope that I helped you guys make a decision on the A5100. Maybe didn't know about it now you know that it does exist and if you are looking for a second lens I would recommend either the 16 millimeter from Sigma or this one the 30 millimeter 1.4 they're amazing lenses I had no complaints with it the autofocus worked great and I will emphasize that the autofocus on this camera is actually unbelievable like for what it is I think it's really really great so so that's it for this video thank you so so much for watching as always please don't forget to subscribe below like this video and I'll see you guys on my next one bye